With all the pomp and circumstance of the trooping of the colour, Rolls launched their new car, the Silver Seraph. Jeremy has driven it. Here it is, everyone. The BMW 750iL. 75,000 pounds worth of precision engineering. It has a 5.4 litre V12 engine to provide plutocrats with raunchy, Germanic, Euro-conquering power. Inside there is leather, there is wood, there is satellite navigation and a television. The path is clear, though no eyes can see. The course laid down long before. This is the car that Rolls-Royce has to beat. And here it comes. Only the ninth new car in Rolls' 92-year history. The Silver Seraph is as British as the Empire, only slightly larger. There is grace here, but it's overpowered by the presence and the majesty. Despite the curved tail and the sleeker front end, despite the fact it's 300 pounds lighter than the old car, it's so very obviously a Rolls-Royce. Or is it? For 30 years, all Rolls-Royces have been propelled along by the same 6.75 litre V8. But not anymore. Now, Rolls-Royce couldn't afford to design their own new engine, so the Silver Seraph uses the same 5.4-litre V12 that you'll find in that BMW. It also uses the same sort of power steering system and the same sort of five-speed automatic gearbox, though, of course, in the Rolls, the stick is mounted on the steering column. There's lots of BMW switches in there, too. Now, of course, a lot of you will be absolutely horrified by all this, but it's what you do with the components that matters. Don't worry. This is rather more than a BMW with thick carpets. The engine, for instance, has been tuned by Cosworth to give more torque, more low-down grunt than you get in a BMW. But you still have 322 brake horsepower. The Seraph gets from 0 to 60 in less than 7 seconds. And in a few months' time, there'll be a Bentley version called the Anage. It'll have a BMW V8 engine to which Cosworth have added two turbochargers. Expect to see 0 to 60 pass in something of a blur. But that's then, this is now, and this is by far the fastest Rolls-Royce I've ever driven. There's tons of torque too, but it's not the silent shove you might imagine. Now the old engine was never as quiet as legend suggests, but this new BMW unit, which is quite simple with just two valves per cylinder, is always audible. It's not loud, it's just there, like background music. I can forgive this, though, and the accompaniment from the wind section and even a broken windscreen wiper because of the way the Seraph handles. The old roller was just awful. It floated and rolled until it went over a pothole. Then the suspension just gave up and went on holiday. This one, though, is a completely different animal. It still rides like the Titanic over any surface you care to mention, but it handles like an MTB. Thanks to adaptive damping, <laughs> you can drive the old dowager like her petticoats on fire. Basically then, this stunning silver seraph is now a blend of traditional magic carpet comfort with Germanic get up and go. It's a creme brulee with a lemon twist. I just wish they hadn't served it up in a ramekin. Space in the back is tighter than you might think. I tell you what, with its new small, sporty steering wheel to replace the Baker-like tractor tyre you used to have in the old roller, a lot of owners are going to take up driving. If you're a chauffeur and your boss buys one of these, 
start job hunting. I have to say though that the BMW is even more nimble and at £75,000 it's less than half the price of the Rolls. It's also better equipped, cheaper to run and in the back at least more spacious. In every way really this is the better, more sensible car. And yet, by miles, I would prefer the Rolls-Royce. And here's why. What you're looking at here is a Steinway Grand Piano, which can cost anything up to £200,000. Steinway & Sons was founded at the end of the last century in Manhattan by a German immigrant. Their pianos won awards for engineering excellence, and you can see why when you see how the grain of the spruce wood soundboard runs in line with the strings. It's a technical masterpiece, and yet you'll find the first ever Steinway in New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art. This is the BMW 750IL of keyboard instruments. Now what Rolls-Royce do is take the basic ingredients, the keys, and produce an instrument of real clout. They make an organ. The 12 cows that died to make these seats and this upholstery were raised in northern Scandinavia where there are no barbed wire fences to nick their precious hides. Just look at the wood on this dashboard. Note how the the pattern of the veneer in front of me is exactly matched by the pattern of the veneer in front of the passenger. Now you get cruise control and traction control and you can have a fax machine if you want and a television set but this is not a branch of Dixon's, this is not the Groucho, this is a gentleman's club with a judge in a wing-back chair by the fire, dead. The Rolls-Royce may be nearly as nice to drive as the BMW, but it's 10 trillion times nicer to drive in. That is a superb car, but you know something? It isn't the star of the show. This 